What's up guys, my name is Liam, and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Fantec Aria 2 and the Aria 2 Pro. This is an updated version of the original that's already been a huge fan favorite and one of my favorite egg-shaped gaming mice. So what are the changes that they've made? How does it stack up against the competition? And more importantly, could this be the perfect gaming mouse for you? Let's check it out. Before we get started today, I did wanna let you know that both of these were sent out to me. However, everything you are gonna be hearing in this video today is gonna to be my own words and my own opinions. Included inside the box, over here on the right side, I have the pro version. And then over here on the left side, I have just the original to the non-pro version. So you get pretty much the exact same thing in the box for the most part, a warranty card, this little thank you letter right here. This does come with an additional set of larger skates and dot skates, both comes with grips. These grips do feel pretty good. They're rubberized, pretty gripping, have a pretty sticky feeling to them. The one difference between both of these, however, they actually do both come with USB-C cables, but the non-pro version just comes with a 1K receiver and the dongle adapter, whereas the pro version does come with the wireless receiver that has a pulling rate up to 8K, and yes, you can also do 4K and the 2K, and then lower pulling rates like the 1K and below that. But here's a close-up look of this 8K wireless receiver. It does have an LED indicator up here at the top, USB-C in the back, and it does have a rubberized bottom. So one thing I wanted to be very clear with you up front and off the bat is these are two different mice as far as the internals go. So this one has a CX MCU in it, whereas this one has the Nordic MCU in it. With that being said, if you are planning on picking this up and wanting to upgrade in the future to get the wireless receiver to get an 8K pulling rate, that is not a possibility on this mouse. I do wanna be very clear on that. So in order to get the higher pulling rates, like the 2K, 4K, or the 8K, you do have to purchase the Pro version. This one does not have the opportunity to upgrade in the future. But besides that, that is really the two major differences between both of these versions. The fact that the original will be capped at the 1K pulling rate. Coming down here at the bottom, as you can see, they look very similar to one another. They both have the same skate design, and I really do like the skates that come included on here a lot. They feel really good, have a very consistent and smooth glide. We have the same functions, DPI button right here. This is where it, I believe it allows you to pair to the Bluetooth. And then you have your on and off button down here in the middle. Switch it to the right to turn it on and use it with the dongle, or switch it over to the left to use it with the Bluetooth mode. And everything about the feeling of these in the hands feel identical to one another. They both have a very solid build quality. I have yet to notice any type of issues with any type of creaking or flexing at all while using these. If you were to push really hard here in the middle, you can get some light bending. Nothing that I noticed when I'm even using really hard force in game and it doesn't activate the side buttons or anything like that. But both these also do come with a really fantastic coating. Big fan of this coating. It's been very grippy for me. Even if I were to get my hands slightly wet or whatever, it does kind of lock in your grip a little bit more. So huge fan of it. Even the clicks for the main buttons, side buttons and scroll wheel on both of these it do feel identical. When you do click in here from the center, I'm getting a very minimal amount of pre-travel, but nothing too bad. The clicks, these are both using Juana Blue Shell Pink Dots. Still probably my favorite mechanical switch out there. Post-travel feels great on these. I'm not getting a whole lot of play going left to right or any type of teetering. Even the implementation, no matter where you click on this, actually has really light clicks from here in here from the back. So no matter how you grip this mouse, I feel like the clicks do feel really solid. A little bit more play up here in the front, which is pretty standard, but even when you click up here in the front, it doesn't even make contact with the base or anything like that. So yeah, everything on mouse one and mouse two on both of these feel fantastic. And like I said, same experience on both of these as I've been going back and forth and testing them. The scroll wheel feels tensioned pretty nicely. Didn't really notice any issues with it getting stuck on steps as I was using it. And the center scroll click, a little bit on the stiffer end, but nothing too bad. Like I said, same thing over here on the red copy. They do feel identical. For the side buttons, the side button implementation has been really solid for me. I do get a little bit of play back here in the rear. Nothing too bad. The more that you go towards the middle, 
you get like nearly almost no pre-travel and it feels a little tighter up here in the front. Even the post-travel on these, there's just a slight bit amount, nothing too noticeable, and I'm not noticing any type of wobbling back or forth. The play that I am getting from the rear here is nothing that I noticed in game. If you look at the shape of this mouse, it is kind of far back there. And the entire time that I've been using this and gripping it, I typically grip it from the middle or a little bit more towards the front like that. So every time I have been activating the side button in the rear, I have been pressing it from the front right there. And it's just show you really quickly, I've been messing around with this one quite a bit, but pretty much the exact same experience over here on the non-pro version. So everything about both these mice have been feeling really solid to me with no major outliers. So let's go ahead and drop the sound test. I'll do it with both of these mice. Everything about the weight and balance on both of these mice have been feeling spot on for me. I really do feel like they've done a great job for just the size and shape of the mice by spreading out the weight pretty evenly. So throwing both of them on my scale, starting out with the non-pro version, sitting at approximately 53.5 grams. That is with the bigger stocks case that do come included over here on the pro version. Getting it just a slight bit heavier, not sure exactly why that is. Could be something with the internals, but 54.2 grams. It is using this similar software we've seen several times before. I always drop the debounce setting time down to get the lowest click latency possible. On this next page, it does allow you to do things like adjust your DPI and the polling rate. And I always do recommend coming over here to the settings option and enabling the long distance mode to give you the strongest wireless signal possible for the most stable performance when you're using the higher pulling rates. They did make some minor adjustments from the original, though it is still the same shape. The improvements that they did make besides lowering the weight, my favorite thing, as you can see up here before the buttons, mouse one and two, they were kind of exposed here. They did lift up the wall over here, so it makes it a lot more comfortable to grip it at the front or just when you're putting your fingers up here in general when using it. They did make the side buttons just a little bit smaller than the original. Not that I feel like these side buttons are too small or anything like that. They've been working pretty well for me. And then over here on the right side, they did have this open design right here. I did kind of mention in my review when I reviewed the original a long time ago, how this would kind of pinch my fingers from time to time. So the fact you don't have to worry about that anymore, that is a huge improvement for me. And it doesn't have this sign right here, even though that's cool. It kind of sticks out and protrudes from the shell, and it did kind of make it feel just a little bit less comfortable. And then also with the previous version, it did have a removable shell here in the back, where this one is just all one solid piece now with no removable shell. But besides that, that really covers the majority of it, looking at both of them from the bottom. As you can see, it does look like they are still using the same skate design. I'm not sure if it is the exact same but it looks very close if it's not. I've already done shape comparisons on this mouse before, but let's just go ahead and do it again for the fun of it. Starting out with what, in my opinion, is the biggest competition for the Aria 2, the Zalpin Z1 Pro. I'm a huge fan of this mouse. I even named this one of my top budget gaming mice picks. So when going back and forth and comparing these to one another, I would say both of these are truly my favorite. I just reviewed an updated version that they came out with this, uh, a little bit heavier in weight, uh, closer than this, and it does have a coating on it. And I would really say that the advantages, when I reviewed this versus the new one, I did prefer the 
this older one over the newer one in just about every single way. And really the only one advantage I feel like this has over the Aria 2 is that if you do get the older version with the open bottom and the smaller battery in it, it is lighter weight. But besides that, I really do feel like with the Aria that the I just kind of like the size and shape of this a little bit more. Um, obviously that's going to be more of a preference thing, but when it comes to the coating, this has a far superior coating in my opinion. I do really prefer these skates that do come on this. So the RA2 just feels a little bit better, more premium, a little bit more comfortable for me in the hands. Again, that's just my personal opinion. But as you can see when looking at both of these, the size and shape of them, not too far apart. They do have their differences. I do feel like the RA2 does feel just a little bit bigger in the hands there just as far as the width and everything goes when you're holding it but here's the difference in the curve profile going from the top mid down to the sides and here's a final look of them from the side with the front to rear curve profile Next up, we'll go ahead and throw it up against the Orochi, very popular mouse since this came out. And again, all around, the Aria 2 does feel just like a little bit of a larger mouse compared to the Orochi V2. And one very clear, obvious difference is the pretty high sensor position over here on the Orochi V2. But looking at the dimensions from the top mid curve down the sides, even the curve profile from front to back, you can see how the Aria 2 fills up your hands just a little bit more. All right, and last but not least, I will throw up an absolute legend here, the G305. As you can see on the bottom, clearly having much flatter sides, a little bit flatter filling on the 305 from the top mid down to the rear over here. And then finally, a little bit of a flatter filling too over here on the 305, looking at the curve profile from front to back. All right guys, so that about wraps things up on the Aria 2 and the Aria 2 Pro. I really do enjoy working with Fantech a lot. They're one of the few companies that every single time they send me out a mouse, they always want to talk to me, get my thoughts. Uh, I even just recently did a call with them and they really try and go over every single aspect about these mice. If anything sticks out to me at all that I feel like should be changed. And I feel like that really means a lot because it shows how passionate they really are about getting their mice right. They try and cater as much as they can to the community. If there's anything in their previous mice that people have complained about in the past, they're always quick to try and correct it, fix it, or make it better. And you can clearly tell that that is the case with both of these mice. Everything about them from the clicks, the coating, the skate design has been feeling it really solid to me. So if you are looking at getting an updated version of the original Aria, maybe getting a little bit of a higher pulling rate or a lighter weight, I would definitely say in my opinion, this is my favorite egg shape gaming mice that's currently on the market. All right guys, so if you have any questions or feel like I left anything out, Please let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed watching this video and are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.